there aren't a lot of stories which has the capability to capture the attention of the viewer in an instant than a well-structured and written murder mystery. The thrill and suspense that comes with it is quite tough to surpass. Now, there are a lot of variants in this genre of films, such as crime dramas with its different perspectives, atmospheric and gritty noirs, or the good old, professional and amateur detectives with their distinct process of handling the investigation. These can be told or shown from various angles, the criminal committing the felony, events leading to the victim's demise, or the authorities trying to identify the perpetrator. Sometimes, a film can cater to the viewer or leave every party in the blind. Whatever it might be, by the end of its runtime, the offender is usually captured. In the past, there can be plenty of wonderful examples of titles of such nature that easily accomplish to astonish me, enthrall me, and leave a long-lasting mark on me. However, that's where the issue lies. After watching a good chunk of them, the methodical pattern starts to become visible way before it manages to carry out its intended effect, which can quickly become the damning flaw for them and ruin the overall experience. The twists and turns are integral parts for a mystery film. If that feels a bit off or obvious, then it loses its primary element and what makes them worth watching. In recent years, it has particularly became a recurring problem, where majority of the films under this category either deliberately or accidentally oversimplify their stories which results in multiple plot holes or conveniences to advance its narrative. Trying way too hard to come off as clever or complicated while achieving the opposite, leading to a scenario where it feels like this genre is losing its potency. There are dozens of preferential quirks of mine that makes them a bit tame in comparison to their predecessors. However, those are just minor personal quandaries that can be overlooked if tried. The one that irks me the most is something that a lot of them suffer from, but they aren't easily noticed by the masses or simply ignored. And this fallacy isn't only found in recent titles. The specific misstep goes way back. Where's Mrs. Owen? Oh, they were delayed. Good to see you. Motive means opportunity. Similar to the procedure of solving a case revolving around a murder, mystery films inquire the same three questions after the pivotal query is cleared. How it was executed, which eventually leads to who did it, and then the reason behind it. In other words, what compelled or pushed them to carry out that act. How, who, and why. For the longest time, films that came under this genre mainly explored the question how for the predominant portion of their duration and waited until it reached its epilogue to reveal who was behind the offense, subsequently unveiling the reasoning behind their action in a haphazard manner. This quick and short final act is the causation for those older titles to become ineffective in retrospect. But the actual problem lies in the structuring of them and the lazy employment of the plot twist trope. If you wait for the finale to disclose the question who, then there wouldn't be any more time left to examine the question why. By that point, the suspense bubble has already been burst and the tension has been released. Whatever is done after that isn't going to hold the same amount of anticipation. The worst offender of this mistake are the adaptations of Agatha Christie's and Arthur Conan Doyle's novels. There is a reason why their characters are fictional as in reality, the outcome isn't attained that easily or ever. With that being said, Alfred Hitchcock was a rare filmmaker from that era who was far more competent with how he confounded the audience with his stories. Psycho can be mentioned in here, but Vertigo is a far better specimen with its multifaceted and layered storyline that can still be considered an exceptional mystery film even if it is compared to what gets released nowadays, which are laughably bad for current standards. However, that doesn't stop them from receiving commendable reviews and ratings. Now, all of this might make it sound like the entire notion of plot twist is long dead, overused, or misused. But that isn't the case in here. 
Knives Out and its sequel can be an exemplar collection of films that manage to present the concept without the cliches and continue to entertain or surprise me with what it has still left to offer. However, at the end of the day, it is simply a revamped version of all those outdated detective mysteries with their inorganic and unrealistic revelations to make their ending more memorable, when there is a far daring and satisfying technique to operate that cinematic accessory. Park Chanuk is the ideal director for this section, concentrating on the question why, as his work always fixates on the morality of the character's deeds and what transpired in their life that led them to taking that decision. We are always informed who is behind the turbulence which has been forced into the life of the protagonist and their loved ones. But after it gradually discloses bits and pieces of information, we are made aware of their intention behind it. And that is important as he makes the viewer assess who is at right and who is at wrong, if any. Apart from few exceptions, most of the people in his universe are generally flawed, immoral or depraved to say the least, either served in that direction or possessing that mentality from the beginning. And this can be seen in his debut feature length film, Joint Security Area. We know what happened, how it was carried out and who were behind it at least their rendition of the mishap. It is by all means a wonderful piece of work from the director. However, he perfected this signature formula of his with The Handmaiden. There are numerous titles from his catalog which are noteworthy in their own way. But he flawlessly positioned the distraction right in the middle of the story, completely changing the route of the journey we were about to go in creating the best and utterly unexpected plot reversal in the history of cinema. With multiple tricks up its sleeve that doesn't loosen its grip with how uncertain it can get at any point. Although it isn't a traditional mystery film or can be categorized in the same group as the ones discussed before, it still ranks above almost every single title from that decade who were still following the established process and creating calculable stories. There were few exceptions like David Fincher's Gone Girl which utilized this method of storytelling, albeit with a crucial dissimilarity in how effective the diversion is. In The Handmaiden, it was an unforeseen turn of events, whereas Gongal and Finch's dependence on typical clues which appears throughout his filmography makes the discovery easily evident as the format can be evaluated at first glance. In other words, the foreshadowing was crystal clear right from its conception, while in The Handmaiden it only becomes apparent after a second viewing. The way it laid the subtle signs about the actuality of the relations and arrangements between all those figures are masterfully crafted and completely overhauled the rules. As the question who is simply not fair to the medium of cinema, as it cannot truly cover it, and the question why is far more interesting. The possibility and potential of the latter is extremely large, and the scale and scope of the former is very limiting. However, there is a way around it. A film can only show so much in its finite span of time, and technically, or in reality, anyone can be the culprit. But this exact hopelessness can be used in an advantageous fashion. Much like most genres, this tool has to evolve with time or shift to a different avenue in order to remain fresh and not become stale. And that switch can come from the sort of titles who primarily emphasize on the internal flaws and external factors affecting a department or a single person trying to deduce the criminal. With the passing time, films that fit under this description have gradually transformed into some of the distinctive experiences I have had. The question how alone becomes such an unrealistic task for them that the latter two, who and why, are simply unimaginable. At that moment, they are left with the bewildering what, which starts to reshape into a burden that can't be easily lifted. There are a handful of films that can be cited in here 
But Fungjuno's Memories of Murder is unbeatable in this classification. Even though he isn't known for creating such films, in 2003 he gave the world a mystery that hasn't been outside since then. An atrocity that struck a village and the people residing there out of nowhere, leaving the officials in a helpless state. Boasting an excellent social commentary on the law system and how ineptitude at higher level causes disruption in the responsible task force and destruction to hundreds of villagers who were gravely affected by it and victims who never received justice. David Fincher's Zodiac parallels lots of attributes from this film such as being based around a real-life incident, a serial killer who has never been discovered, and the operation and its operators facing more complications than compliance. What it lacks works in favor of memories of murder, that being the scale of its setting. Unlike the former, it is confined to a small and secluded province where the possibilities and scope is manageable. And this is what sets them apart and makes the latter more practical. The incompetence and aloofness of the officers not only works as a great addition, but makes more sense too. They weren't ready for such a crime because they were never prepared or trained for them, let alone adequately equipped to deal with it. The outcome a haunting nightmare for a nation and a brutal experience for millions of people. Now, the director could have easily constructed a fictional conclusion to provide a sense of closure or comfort to the viewers, but didn't choose to do so. And that is exactly what makes this film and its closing scene so iconic. It not only can be anyone who could be watching or be aware of it, but someone from the locality whom we watched or met along the way. That's how you master the mystery.